Hello and welcome to my talk. I am Florian Block. I'm a reader in digital creativity at the School of Arts and Creative Technologies at the University of York. And today I'll be talking to you about generative AI and the AI stands for artificial intelligence. So to understand what generative mean, let's quickly go to the definition to generate um, as a verb is to cause something to exist, right? To create something that wasn't there before. So what is generative AI? It's artificial intelligence that can create text, artwork, images, videos, music, and so on. And I want to take you on a creative journey that, that shows how generative AI can be used. So first, we will head over to ChatGPT. So this is by a company called OpenAI. This has made the news. You may have read about it. Your parents and your teachers may have talked to you about it. This is essentially a tool that you can instruct to write about anything you like. It's almost like having a conversation with someone. Um, so when we say something to ChatGPT, we call this a prompt. And I will use this word prompt quite a bit in this talk. So do memorize this. This is an important word. So the way you write your, your prompt affects the way the AI responds. So let's do um, a demo. Let's say I want to do an art project about, let's say something fun, animals in space, right? What's not to like? So I basically say, write a paragraph about a fun art project that involves uh, uh, painting animals uh, in space. Write it so that a 10 year old can understand. I'll say a little bit more about this in a bit. So once you hit enter, ChatGPT will start to generate stuff. Let's imagine a really cool art project that combines two amazing things, animals and space. We can create a special painting where we bring animals to life in a cosmic world. First, we'll start by choosing our favorite animals like dog, cats, or even unicorns. Then we'll use our colorful paints to give them spacesuits and helmets, just like real astronauts. We can imagine them floating among the stars and planets, exploring the wonders of the universe. We can add sparkly glitter to make it look like they're flying through space. It's a fun and creative way to blend our love for animals with the infinite beauty of outer space. Right, so um, the interesting thing here is that we can now essentially um, do another prompt. So. Let's just have a little bit more with ChatGPT. Okay, can you give me one concrete idea? Um, and I think I've then reconsidered and thought example because what I want is just, okay, give me something I should paint. Absolutely. Let's take the example of a playful painting featuring a dog in space. To create this artwork, you will need a canvas or a sheet of paper. First, we'll sketch the outline of our dog, giving it a cute face and floppy ears. Then we'll grab our paintbrushes and start adding colors. We can paint the dog's body with a vibrant shade of brown or any color we like. Next, we'll mix blue and white paint to create a beautiful cosmic background. Using small strokes, we'll paint stars, planets, and maybe even a rocket ship in the distance. Now comes the exciting part, dressing up our dog for its space adventure. We can paint a silver spacesuit on the dog's body and a shiny helmet on its head making sure to leave space for its adorable eyes and nose. To add some extra fun, we can sprinkle some glitter on the painting, giving it the illusion of sparkling stars. And there you have it, an incredible artwork that combines the joy of our furry friends with the vastness of outer space. So that's given us now one concrete idea. But what is remarkable about this is you see the prompt at the top, it says, okay, can you give me one concrete example? I didn't again say that this should be about animals in space. ChatGPT has remembered this from our previous prompt and the previous back and forth we had. So it's almost like having a conversation or a chat with ChatGPT, hence the name. But I would like to call this a dialogue. 
And a dialogue in the context of film and movies is the short word for a conversation between two or more people. All right. And um, in our case, we'll think of this as a conversation between a person and an, a, a, an artificial intelligence, an AI. All right. So think and remember this word dialogue. So now we have two things, the prompt and the dialogue that are really important. So let's go on our creative journey, a dog in space. So just like generating text, the AI can help us generate images based on a text prompt. So again, what you give the AI is text of a description of what you want painted. But you will see throughout this journey that the way you write your prompt will greatly affect the result. By the way, this is a tool called Invoke AI um, that I'm using, and we'll say a little bit more about that later. So let's just type in, um, in this prompt, let's just say dog in space. And this is really as simple as we can get. And then we click this button Invoke, and you will see now the AI is thinking a little bit, and it'll start to generate what you'll see is going to become an image. We can already see the outlines and there it is. That is our first AI generated image. And you can see a couple of really funny things on this picture. First of all, the dog almost sits on, on the earth as if it can, this is a, a really big dog sitting on the earth. It's not really floating. And I, I always imagined that when you, when an animal is in space, it would float. And secondly, it's created some really odd things in the in the background, some lines. Of course, it all looks like stars, and um, that's fine. But there are some things in that image that I don't want. But you know, we talked about how the prompt is really important. The way the, what you say is really really important for getting a better result. And so let's be a little bit more detailed in our description. And we certainly want a spacesuit. Right, so let us add that and say dog in space wearing a spacesuit. And again, we hit this invoke button. And we will see now that some more interesting things are happening. So here we have it a dog in space wearing a spacesuit. And it all kind of checks out. This, this is interesting. So it has made a spacesuit. But let's talk a, a bit about the things that we didn't write, but that it did anyway. So it added some weird looking planets in the background, particularly the left one on the left that is looks like a moon, but has rings around it in different layers. That is really odd. It's also added to other planets that are maybe a bit uncomfortably close to the planet Earth that we're on. So they're not necessarily realistic, but that's not the problem. Another really interesting thing to observe is that you can see on the spacesuit, it shows what looks to our eyes like an American flag. So something really important to understand is that the way these art, this artificial intelligence learns about how to draw things, it is by looking at huge number of images that are out there in the internet. And you can imagine that of all the spacesuit pictures that are out there, a lot of them would have American flags on it. So that's something really important to consider. And we'll pick this up after our creative journey. Um, now, I have the sense that I don't like some of these planets, particularly that weird top left moon with the, with the, with the rings. So what the AI can do is it can imagine new things only in selected areas of the image. So this is what we call in painting. You need to adjust your prompt to do this properly and also set how much freedom the AI has to invent new things in that area. You can also paint something as the starting point for the AI. And I'm going to demonstrate this now, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm choosing a black brush 
And I basically now with black just paint over this thing. So it's a black void since it's stars. We can't really see that anything is missing. But I do want something in that place. I want an actual moon. So I look, I pick a sort of slightly light grayish color. And to the best of my ability, I will draw a circle in the size roughly of the moon that I wanted. And this is a really bad circle. But in any case, so now I'm using a little bit of a lighter color. I'm going to reduce the size of my brush a little bit. And now I'm going to just paint a few details in there. And, you know, when you look at it like this, you will say, what is he doing? This is this looks ridiculous. That is not a moon at all. But now what I can do, and I'm increasing my brush size, I can draw a mask. So watch how this goes. So you basically select the area that you want to replace. And I leave everything in the prompt, but I add moon, comma, dog in space wearing a spacesuit. Now I click invoke and see what happens. Now the AI takes my poorly painted moon and tries to convert it to something that looks like a moon. It's, it's pretty okay, but you know, it's obviously taken my really bad shape. So now what I can do is I can give the AI more freedom to go away from what I've painted, to imagine things that are not exactly like I painted, but a little bit more imaginative. And here we go. Now we have a moon that's much rounder. There's still some issues with it. So I just click that button again. So now I can um, basically create a new version. And every time this happens, the AI almost rolls a dice. It's random. And, you know, you can go through the different versions. You can generate 10, 20 different versions. They will always, always come out slightly different. And I actually really like this moon because it has an interesting effect of lighting. It's only partially in the sunlight. You can see that there's some really interesting craters coming through through the light. So this is something that I choose um, to do. Now, we talked about prompts and we always use the prompt to say something that we want to see. And this also works the other way. You see that for at the at the top left, there's also a, an element for negative prompts. And I'll um, demonstrate that now. So um, I've decided I really actually don't like the other planets. I think the moon and the Earth is great. Um, but what I'd really like to see is that beauty of space. So I'd like to actually have some nebula, nebula, so, you know, the one that you see in the space telescopes. So I want a really nice color. So I'm using a little bit of a transparent brush here in blue, and I'll paint this across here, right? So I want a really dramatic, nice, colorful um, gas cloud in, in space, a little bit for dramatic effect, right? And I'm just going to use a couple of colors here. And you see they're sort of slightly transparent, so they mix and create some interesting colors in between. <clears throat> and uh, here we go. So I've basically just given it a rough area that um, and a rough instruction of the sort of colors I, I like. And now, again, I'm going to draw my mask because I don't want to regenerate the entire image because I like parts of it. Um, but I want, to, um, I want to only create this nebula in this area here. So that's what I'm doing. So again, I'm changing my prompt. I'm adding colorful nebula and I click invoke. So you will see that we're getting some interesting results here. So um, this nebula is maybe a little bit too close to what I drew. There's two sharp lines. So I'm now giving it more freedom. I've, draw, I've dragged that sliders to give it a bit more freedom to imagine. But look what it's done now. It's essentially looked at it and thought, uh -uh, that's a rainbow. And I don't, I like rainbows, but in this instance, I don't. So I say, tell it not to generate a rainbow. And when I tell it not to generate a rainbow with this colorful nebula prompt, now we're starting to get something interesting. Now, this is a nebula, like I imagined, but it's lost the color a little bit that I wanted. So what I want to do is I want to, again, decrease that strength and give it a little bit less freedom to, to go away from the colors I gave it. 
And now it's generating a nebula that has my yellow, my blue and my the pink in it that I told you. So I'm really quite pleased with this. That's a really, really good result. So I'm going to, um, when you look at it, how it compares to my original colors, it's taken my input. It looks the best. It's a good, um, a, a good version that I want. So I accept this. So this is now in my image. Now, now I really like what I've got here, right? But I don't like that it's a square picture. I want to actually maybe even frame this um, and have it sort of a little bit wider. And you can also do this in the same way that we have done the in-painting. We can also do something called out-painting, um, which is essentially extending the image into areas that, um, that, aren't, that aren't there yet. So I drag it slightly to the left and I... Um, I, I've decided to add a few more things because the earth is in there. Um, so I basically decided to put that on the picture. And um, I want it to stay very close to the original image. So I basically just click Invoke. And there we go. It's starting to pretty much leave everything the same in the right part of the image. But it imagines, based on what's on the right side of the image, it imagines the new portion. So I'm happy with that. Good. So now we have extended our image through outpainting. And what I want to do now is demonstrate, you know, now I'm looking at this picture and think, well, this all looks very photorealistic. And I would very much like this to be, look less like a photo, but more like a piece, like a painting, right? So... Um, we're using something called image to image. So the AI can help you create slightly different versions of an existing image based on a text prompt. Again, this is called image to image. Um, you can also ask for different styles and moods. So basically what I felt here is um, I'm adding a lot of a lot of things to this prompt. So I'm adding, I want it to look like um, digital uh, concept art, like for made for movies, and I want it to be highly detailed. Um, maybe almost like award-winning. I want it to look like an award-winning painting. And I think the dog doesn't look very happy, so I want the dog to look happy. So I want the whole picture to have sort of a happy influence. So note that I've now selected the entire image. There's no mask or anything. So I'm going to reduce the strength a little bit. So I wanted to stay fairly close to what I have here because I like the overall image. And here's something that I really love. So there's a few things going on. It's kept the moon. It's added a, nif a different planet. It's done some really interesting stuff with the clouds. They almost like look dreamy, like in a painting. It's created some beautiful, it's turned my nebula into a planet, but it's kept some nebula, but it's created a planet. And the face is much happier. Now look at this fella. He, he or she is really, really happy. So this is a very powerful process. And this is just an example. Now, I have to say, when I prepared this talk for you, I then I got a bit into a rabbit hole and I want to I want to tell you in in a sped up way I want to show you a little bit what I've did because this process it can be really fun and produce some amazing results. So when I saw these clouds and these alien planets in the background I almost wanted to go away from earth and I wanted it to be something that is from uh, like an alien planet from outer space. So what I did is sort of I colored the earth into I wanted a um, sort of almost like a green atmosphere. So I basically used um, just a transparent gr green brush to do this. Um, I painted a few nuances with a darker green because I wanted there to be towering clouds and like really alien uh, landscape. So I removed Earth and I replaced it in the prompt with alien planet, green atmosphere, green mist, towering clouds. So then I, I, I did this and you see immediately there are some interesting results that I really loved. Um, now I wanted, I wanted the clouds to go slightly beyond the horizon and to go out of the atmosphere and into space. And so I did the same thing. I just drew some very basic uh, bits and I masked them out within painting. You'll see, um, you know, um, but, you know, essentially there's a lot of, it took me on a journey and you see now they come out um, it, this, this really for me was 
something that that I I loved where this was going, the direction. But then I thought this 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 dog is such so alone. I I think that dog needs a buddy. So there was a lot of back and forth, trial and error, and after a f lots of different attempts, I settled on a um, like a robot companion, uh, like Luke Skywalker had R two D two. So that was my final picture, and and there we go. So this was my overall image, and I was happy with that. So you can see the creative journey that we went on together from what's in the left, top left, um, our original image. We've made lots and lots of different decisions on the way to step by step refine it and shape the image into something we like. And the important thing is that I gave the AI ideas, I told it where to paint things, I said gave it colors, I told it in the text what to generate. But then also the AI came up with new things. It drew this little planet in the top left. It didn't generate a dog, but a robot. So that's an idea I took on from the AI and that I really, really liked. It painted a planet, but also took my original nebula idea into account. And I then sort of decided to change the color of the planet to green and, and create all these towering clouds. So I really want you to think of the creative journey as a dialogue, as we said in the start. A lot of the time when we talk about this technology, people say or ask, is AI replacing art? And the answer to that in my mind is clearly no. Humans and AI work together to create new things. And as you've seen throughout this demonstration, it takes a lot of back and forth mixing ideas by humans and AI in new ways to achieve something great. So now comes the really important bit, the good and the bad. Every new technology has good uses and has bad uses, can benefit people on the one hand and also lead to harm on the other. And when you walk away from this talk, I want you and your teachers and your parents to have conversations around these points. Let's start with the good. I hope what I've demonstrated is that generative AI creates powerful, exciting, and fun new ways to be creative. It's really important to consider that even people who are not good at art, and there are many of us, we can now create amazing new things. So the ability for someone who has ideas but just don't have the capabilities of painting or drawing the details, you now have the ability to create art just like everyone else. So it can potentially really increase the inclusiveness of the creative process and creative freedom. And lastly, the tools used in this talk are in principle free to use. So in principle, everyone with a gaming PC can download and use these tools for creation of art. But we need to talk about the bad. And this is almost, if not more important than the exciting parts. So I think again, as I've demonstrated, using this technology needs knowledge and it needs to run. It needs expensive computer hardware to run on. So many people from the start will yet again be excluded and not be able to benefit. So we really have to have conversations and efforts to make this available to as many people as possible. A really important question is who owns AI art? So the the picture we've generated without our knowledge may contain someone else's ideas and style, for instance, and copy that. And we might even steal it without knowing it. 
So how can we ensure that what's generated can be used and can pay credit to the artists based off of whom the artificial intelligence has learned to generate its art? So we need to find new ways of dealing with ownership in this in, in this new with this new technology. And lastly, and this is really, really important, there are some really dangerous and harmful ways of using generative AI. Now, in our case, we've done a creative exercise, a dog in space, no harm done, and it's a, a joyful, fun, exciting activity. But of course, as you can imagine, generative AI completely relies on what prompt we give it and what decisions we make to use it like a blank canvas we could draw anything and i want you all to have conversations about the dangers and the harm that can potentially cause caused by this technology and importantly how can we minimize the risk so for me the answer to that last questions and the three ones before is to start talking about these things, to demystify this technology and to make sure that as many people as possible have the benefits from it and learn the skills and knowledge to avoid the dangers and the risks. So with that, one important thing needs to be said for all the kids watching, please do not use this technology on your own. Talk to a teacher or your caretaker, your parents, and use it together with them. Learn it together. And that means that you can be safe in using this technology. And now I want to thank you very much. And please feel free to reach out to me with any questions that you may have. Thank you.